Uh, um, Misty, um, what were your thoughts? Were, what, where were you, how were you raised with in terms of understanding money and more specifically insurance? What was insurance for? Oh man, honestly, like growing up, we not, I never knew about life insurance. Life insurance was so far fetched. It was that mentality of like life insurance is something that somebody gets if somebody dies. That was my understanding, the understanding of my family as well, because we didn't grow up knowing about life insurance. We grew up like if somebody passes away, the entire family pitches in to put that individual to rest. And that was my perspective too, growing yeah. up in that environment. So, you know, that's what I fell in love with. It's like the first presentation that I, if somebody passes away, the entire family pitches in to put that individual to rest. My late twenties, um, you know, my daughter, three years old, are here raising a family. Why don't more of us know about this? And that's what drew to me, it drew my attention um, wholeheartedly because not, even when I presented it to my family, when we were, when we were um, you know, um, more involved in the business and we started talking to our family about it, um, most of them didn't know what life insurance was about either or the bigger perspective of what life insurance can really do. In, in, your, in your family's Puerto Rican background, right? Mm -hmm. what, what happens, how does the family help pay for a funeral? What, what goes down there? You got to go to Alvarez Funeral Home. Yeah. Alvarez, I was about to say, <laughs> Alvarez Funeral Home. Yeah, right. I always say this all the time. It's a, you know, uh, we wait around to pass out the little yellow envelopes. You know, back in the day, we didn't have GoFundMe, which is what we, we encounter now, which is everyone using GoFundMe. But back then was the little yellow envelopes. Yeah. And when you go in, it's just like, well, thank you for coming. Here's a little envelope. And, mm -hmm. you know, and hope for the best that yeah. if somebody puts enough or enough people put in, you know, a couple bucks that we can kind of carve away at some of the, uh, the costs. You know, because I'm, I'm thinking about Humble Park, you know, that's the hood. For those of you that aren't from <laughs> Chicago, it's, it's not your, it's not your uh, Beverly Hills type neighborhood, <laughs> far from it. Matter of fact, if you watch History Channel, you watch Gangland, right? <laughs> they, they talk about a gang that's from Humble Park, okay? Uh, we won't mention the gang, but, uh, but uh, you know, you know the, the neighborhood that you, that you were raised in, the neighborhood that you're in, that you taught in, Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking there right there on, on uh, Paseo, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Right. I can't think of one insurance office, maybe an Allstate, maybe a car insurance, SR22. I'm thinking right there in Western, because my uncle had an um, auto body shop on Western and Le Moyne. Okay. Um, um, I can't think, on that side, it was, it was Chi-Chi's uh, Arimas uh, Tire <laughs> Repair, uh, uh, yeah. Burrito Spot, and then his, I can't think of one no. insurance. I'm not uh, thinking firm. about it now, no. Can't, can't really. even think of one. Mm -mm. So when it comes to educating the community, uh, how, how did you feel when you say, okay, if I can be a blessing to other people, well, first I gotta educate myself first. What were some of the things that you had to learn more about so therefore you can find yourself in a position where you explain to others with passion and confidence? I mean, uh, the life insurance industry in itself, just, just really learning the values, the power, um, and the big difference that it can make in people's lives. Um, you know, just, just researching the testimonies of, and comparing the differences between families that were covered with life insurance and how that changed the, tra uh, the trajectory of their families and the ones that didn't. Yeah. And seeing the way that they were left behind with just more of the struggle, um, the financial detriment, um, and whatnot, and it, and it just it, it hit home because we, we see it happen, you know, over and over and over in our own families, and we just you know that oh that's the norm, right? You know. So you're both teachers. Mm -hmm. Any time in that curriculum in the school system, did they ever teach about finances? Not at all. Even as a student, as a college student, even not like I understand like high school home economics. I had an early childhood education class in high school, lugging around a fake baby for like six weeks. <laughs> and it's like how I wish that they would have switched that around and allowed me to learn how to balance my checkbook, learn about taxes, learn about, you know, different things of finances versus, you know, how to raise a kid, <laughs> right. age, you right. know, as a teenager. Uh, yeah. Interesting. So let's talk about now you are seeing clients. You're, 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 you're seeing clientele. Obviously you went from being a trainee in our system, now running your own agency, right? Which is a huge congrats, right? You know, you're qualifying for equity ownership, all these different things in 2021. So when you're looking at being a difference in your community, talk to us about specifically about uh, the client that um, you just helped, right? The client that you just helped, what was some of, what was some of their uh, situations in terms of uh, them educating themselves of why to buy the policy um, and then and then getting the policy underwritten and eventually approved. Yeah, so I'll touch on that. So in regards to the client that we helped, it was almost like 
I don't want to say accidental conversation, but it was one of those things like, hey, I need life insurance. Let's sit down and talk about options. So I sat down with this individual. It was actually his significant other. Um, so I sat down with her. We ran numbers. And then in conversation, she's like, hey, I think he should get a policy too. Mm -hmm. So I was like, of course. So we went through the entire process, um, went through underwriting. And then, you know, underwriting gave us some, some type of, um, you know, issues back and forth because of the form of identification that he had. Okay. He, um, yeah, so moving no, forward. Form, immigrant, foreign national? No, or it was a, it I was think a, it was probably more the, the, the foreign national or a... Because he was a, he's a U.S. citizen, okay. but it was just a, a specific identification, a okay. the identification that I had, I wasn't even familiar with. Okay. Um, so going into underwriting, I just wrote a cover letter, right? We put a picture of the, ident uh, the ID, and I was like, hey, listen, he's a U.S. citizen, everything cleared up. He's in good standing. Social Security. Yeah, the everything. Whole thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything was in good standing. Yeah. So then they came back and said, unfortunately, we won't be able to accept it. So I could have easily gone back to the client and said, hey, unfortunately, the insurance company is not accepting your ID. Yeah. So, you know, good luck. But I fought for it. I said, hey, listen, there's no issues with his identification. This is just the type of identification he has. Um, so they, I, we went back and forth like four or five times, and yeah. finally they approved it. Wow, so you so, fought for your client. Absolutely. So before this, did they have any form of education about insurance? Did they have any insurance? No, no not, not at, at all. all. It was actually surprising to them that insure the, you know how we compare the old insurance versus the new life insurance? Yeah, yeah. They're like, we didn't even know this existed. We just assumed that life insurance was good if you passed away or something that you got when you were older. So when I gave him the example of like, well, listen, just like, you know, technology has, you know, has done a huge transformation from like the iPhone and to the, to the smartphone. I mean, I'm sorry, from the beeper to the smartphone. <laughs> right now you're thinking of the beeper version of life insurance. Yeah. And that was like mind blowing to me. Yeah, which, still, which by the way, will we still work today. I mean, if you have a pager, I mean, I mean, beep, 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 hold on one second. Right, right. Uh, okay, I got to call somebody. Which is still an effective form of communication today. It's not like it's mm -hmm. not used. It's still right. used, but would you rather have a smartphone instead? Yeah, absolutely. Right. So that's, that's how you educated them. Absolutely. To upgrade their understanding. It's just not for dying. Mm -hmm. Got it. So when, when you're seeing clients, uh, are, are, are they also unaware of life insurance meaning more to them not just for going to a funeral. Are you experiencing that? Oh, 100%. Like I think doing? that, I, I've, I mean, personally, I've witnessed that where individuals are saying things like, you know, I, I always get the, the oohs and ahs of like, wow, I did not know this. You, you know, personal friends of mine, you know, they, they know that we're in the insurance industry and they'll, they'll crack the jokes of like, oh, I'll get that when I'm old. I don't need that now. And so just that, just the lack of understanding. And then you know, we'll say like, well, let me just show you exactly who we are, what we do. And, yeah. you know, if there's anything that we can help you with, then, you know, we'll move forward. And when we have that conversation with them, they're just like, wow, this is like mind blowing. I did not know that you can do this with mm -hmm. life insurance or have this type of benefit with life insurance um, and all these extra features with it. And so it, it's always a, a, a kind of like a, a heartfelt moment when you get those like the oohs and ahs yeah. and when you see that light bulb turn on and then you see the yeah. you see that look on their face of like the shoulda coulda woulda like <laughs> i wish i'd known this a long, a long time, time ago, ago. yeah so when you sat down with them you found a, a, a policy uh, some coverage mm -hmm. and you found a uh, either a style whether it be term or permit right and what what uh, what came about when it come came, uh, came to affordability yeah so that that's a conversation that we actually just had recently with this client because um, we stayed within a certain budget because of what he could afford. Sure. He, his assumption was that, oh man, maybe I can't afford this, maybe it's too expensive. And I said, well listen, I'm, I, my famous quote is, I'm not here to put a hole in your pocket, I'm here to educate you on what we can do for you. I'm here to properly cover, uh, get you proper coverage. So um, he just gave me a certain dollar amount. He said, I want to stay under $30 a month. I said, awesome, let's do it. So we were able to get him the coverage. It would the face amount was um, the coverage amount was a hundred thousand for exactly like twenty seven dollars and some change. And he had zero before him. Zero. Yeah. Even at his job. Um, I'm not sure. So his job was not offering life insurance, but he did have health insurance. Got but it. he didn't have life insurance. But no life insurance. Mm -mm. Only for medical expenses, but nothing in case you were not yeah. here or yeah. maybe. Okay. So 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 talk to us. What happened? So. So he gets insured, it was exactly, um, policy was approved and issued in May of 2019. Okay. 
Fast forward to 15 months later, he ends up getting a heart attack. How old was he? 37. Holy moly. Mm -hmm. Whoever thinks that 37 years old, you get a heart attack. 37. And I mean, I'm from my perspective, I'm 33. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like, we're all, we're in the same age range. I'm 47. Now. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? You got your own young butt. Okay. So it's okay. like, never in a million years, young, young guy, yeah. you know, like never in a million years would he have imagined experiencing something like this, you yeah. know, at all, especially at his age. Yeah. So his girlfriend called me, you know, explained the situation, and she's like, hey, I'm, I remember you telling me about living benefits or something within his policy. Yep. Is that something that you can help us with? So, of course, I filed the claim right away, and we were able Explain to living benefits real quick. Sure. So living benefits is basically if you suffer from a critical, chronic, or terminal illness, such as heart attack, cancer, stroke, you're able to accelerate up to 90% of your policy. Um, while you're alive, so you don't go through financial ruin, then most people go through in a case of an unexpected event. In your experience, did the bank offer this style of insurance? Oh, never. The, 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 the typical Allstate, State Farm Farmers, New York Life, Northwestern Mutual? No. It's only because your entrance into the insurance industry to educate yourself about what's offered in the marketplace and then find out the best companies exactly. for, your, for, your, for, your, for your community where you're able to find the right product that, that fit this type of living benefit style. Absolutely. Got it. Wow. Okay. So the you said less than so twenty seven bucks. Yep, twenty seven dollars and some change. Um, Fifteen months later. Fifteen months later. So let me hold on. Let me do the math. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. So I'm doing the math here. Twenty seven times. You said fifteen months. Fifteen. So they put a total of four hundred five dollars towards the insurance company. Yep. He has a heart attack. He has a heart attack. I filed a claim in a few weeks. It was a you know. Obviously, after all the medical underwriting and all that, and investigation that has to sure. go through a claim. Because it's less than um, two years. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. So it has to go through a medical investigation. It all cleared, and we were able to deliver an $84,000 check. And, and I know you had some, you had some reservation about posting online about the, what the power of life insurance does. Mm -hmm. But what was the response of your social media network when you said, hey, I provided a, uh, how, how much, a 90? Eighty-four thousand two hundred twenty-two dollars to be exact. <laughs> Check. What was the response oh to? Oh my God! It was so many. Like you have no idea how many individuals reached out to me. People I didn't mm -hmm. even know. I made my post public. I have people from Texas, Florida, like Georgia, uh, Virginia. Tell me more about living benefits. I didn't even know life insurance can do wow. that. Wow. Wow. So it's just the power. And the thing is, we usually we're really good about posting about yeah. life insurance, mm -hmm. but. People are skeptical either way, right? Yeah. So when they see a testimony, a testimony and a story like that, it's eye-opening. It's very real, and it made me really emotional because, what if I didn't fight for him and I told him, "Hey, your ID. I'm sorry, they're not accepting your ID. Good luck." You have to fight for your client as if they were your own parents because look at the position he's in now. He's able to properly recover, um, not have to worry about paying or. Ex you know, depending on someone else to pay bills, yep. it, it, it hits home because it's just very emotional. He's not waiting for a COVID check, no. stimulus check, tax refund, unemployment, Section 8, mm -mm. any of that stuff, Department of Health and Human Services. He's not a burden of the government, mm -hmm. okay? And so because he took financial responsibility for himself, according to this death benefit, there's no income taxes that's paid on this 84 $84,000? Right, 84. There's no income tax you pay an $84,000 no. check, right? And so that's part of the big reasons why the life insurance industry has such favorable um, tax uh, consequences because if people take personal responsibility for themselves, the government says, if you're doing that, you're not a burden to us, knock yourself out with some tax benefits, but you got to take care of yourself. So, so think about this real quick. In this person's family, how do they feel when they realize that their relative got an eighty-four thousand dollar check, and he wasn't going to be a burden <laughs> on them? I'm sure it's like, uh, I mean, talking to the girlfriend, she was just a mess. You, uh, you can only imagine they yeah. were going through so much, and she's like, "You have no idea how you know how blessed we feel. Uh, you know, they thanked us so much for even having that conversation with her for taking time. Yeah. Um, because if it wasn't for that conversation, they would have never had coverage." And it's just about reaching out to everyone you know because you never know what tomorrow holds for you.